we are all products of our past, mm -hmm. but we don't have to be prisoners of our past. Welcome to the Winning Family Podcast, the podcast designed to champion parents to raise spiritual leaders. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to the Winning Family Podcast. Michelle and I are really excited about this particular episode. But before we dive into the subject matter, let me just encourage you right out of the gate. Hey, rate, review this podcast. Please be sure to click those share buttons, share it with friends so that uh, other people that you know, especially parents, grandparents out there can benefit from the content we're sharing. And then also send us a DM. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to help answer any specific questions you have. If there are specific uh, topics that you would like for us to address in the, in the near future, we take those very, very serious. In fact, that is exactly what we're doing today. That's right. Uh, we are so thankful for our listeners and those that are a part of the winning family. And we actually had somebody um, submit a question that I thought was very intriguing and so I brought it to you and I'm like, we should do a podcast around this. So we are excited today. Um, the question that was submitted to us from Maria is she said, how do parents that didn't have their emotional needs met when they were children break that generational trauma and be the best parents that they can be to their children? I love that she's really recognizing that. That was the emotional trailblazer that we talked about in our yeah. last podcast um, series that we did on how to build strong spiritual champions. And um, so I thought that was amazing that she brought up that question and caused us to really kind of think through and, and process that because so many of uh, so many of us in our world and have not been raised in an, a healthy situation uh, with parents that were strong, healthy emotionally. Absolutely. And yeah. even our, yeah, and even our, our current generation of young people today yeah. that are struggling so much with, you know, the, the Gen Z generation that is often referred to that is struggling so much with anxiety, you know, emotional, yes. mm -hmm. uh, mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. And so, so here you have, you know, kids today that are struggling with so many things mentally, emotionally and maybe are being raised by parents who also struggled in their time and season of growing up. Yeah. And maybe as a result, you know, their parents may not have been the healthiest or the best type of situation or environment maybe to raise, you know, children in. And so obviously here, there's no perfect parent. <laughs> there's not. I we'll thought just all state parents the are perfect. Obvious, <laughs> that there's yeah, exactly. no perfect parent. So none of us were raised by perfect parents. Yeah. And none of us are perfect parents. It leads me yeah. to a passage of scripture that I want to share that I think I think sometimes is used but also misused. And I want to just share a couple of things about it. Um it is found in Exodus chapter 20 verses 5 through 6 and here's what it says. And of course, again, this is God specifically giving 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 Moses instructions on uh, what he is to in turn, you know, challenge the people of Israel with. And so, this is these are some Old Testament um, things, laws, so to speak, especially as it relates to idolatry and things that were very specific to the nation of Israel, very specific to some commands that God gave. But here's the thing. It says, you must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But this is the verse that I want to really focus on. This is God's promise to all of us. But I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands. Mm -hmm. In essence, that was, was a very specific command for a very specific group of people. And it was re referencing Old Testament law, which basically means the, the sin of idolatry, the sin of disobedience and rebellion against God, mm -hmm. and those patterns— and those sinful lifestyles can be embraced by children mm -hmm. 
who will continue those same rebellious, disobedient lifestyles. And if some, if there's not a course correction, it impacts multiple generations that follow. What God desires more than anything, and I want to say this to any parent who or grandparent, anybody, obviously, that this episode is going to speak to today, I think it's important that we realize that, you know what, as we just emphasized, there's no such thing as a perfect parent. We're, we all have a sin nature, and we all have a sense of insecurity because of that sin nature. And if we're not careful, we can allow the mistakes the failures of a previous generation to label us, define us, um, and to be very specific, there are some who have walked through some very, very painful circumstances, tr very traumatic, a lot of trauma that maybe they endured. And that could you fill in the blank. That could be all kinds of things. And you know specifically maybe what that trauma may have been as it relates to you personally, maybe what you witnessed, what you heard, what you saw, all those things, they have a profound effect on us. God wants us more than anything to look to him. God wants us to run to him. He is our source of refuge, and comfort, our strength. We find our source of identity and security in him and him alone. And the good news is, is that when we as individuals become followers of Jesus Christ, the moment we are born again, the Bible says, I love what 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, for the old is gone, the past is over. And the Bible says that we are new creations in Christ Jesus. Yes. And it goes on to even say in verse 18 there, it goes on to say that we have been not only reconciled to God, mm -hmm. but we also have been given the ministry of reconciliation. We become his ambassadors. So in other words, God gives us a new life. He gives us new beginnings. And when we look to God, not our past, not, not our parents, but we look to God as our healer, as our source of strength and refuge, we find our security and our identity in him, mm -hmm. then he and he alone is the one who ultimately makes us new in our relationship with him through his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. So in other words, he takes our ashes and turns them into beauty. That's right. And so... We may not have the skills, we may not have maybe the the, the depth of understanding right. or knowledge, but those are things that we can learn, and that's right. why we do this podcast. Yes. Maybe you didn't have any mentors, maybe you haven't had anybody to maybe nurture and develop and disciple you, so to speak, that's helped you grow in your faith and helped you grow. If you're married, maybe help mentor you in your marriage relationship as a parent, help come alongside and mentor you as a parent. And so... Yeah, it's it's Those interesting, are important. you know. Yeah. That yes, it's very important. 100%. If if you don't have a mentor, we'd love to be that for you um and just seek seek one out even if it's at a distance that you're learning from. But it's interesting as you think about this question that Maria asked because she, and on the emotional side of things, she's looking for an example to her, a, a guidance to her to to break the chain of choices that that she's looking back in her her history of her family she's mm -hmm. looking that the choices that were passed from generation to generation we obviously we talk about this all the time that we imprint upon our parents we learn from them so the choices the sin that you talked about they're choices that we make and to break those chain of choices Obviously, God gives us a new heart, but we have to learn and grow and become all that he's called us to be as parents. And we have to understand and know where we came from and why we think the way we think. 
and why we do what we do. And you, you've written a, a book about that. Why, why our kids do what they do. But a lot of the times we have, we need to look back and we may, may need to reparent ourselves. Yeah. Because we've learned some wrong things and we may not even realize it, but that's the gift when we receive the Holy Spirit that you talked about. He will stir in us like he's stirring in this listener that I there's something missing there that I did not learn as a child. I did not learn in my home. And the spirit is stirring in her that it's time to learn to reparent yourself and to learn some of these things. Yeah. How do you think we can do well, that? Well, I think first and foremost, as it's been said, and I'll just say this, we are all products of our past. Mm-hmm but we don't have to be prisoners of our past. Amen. And so, therefore, we can break whatever bondage, Mm -hmm. um, whatever uh, spirit of fear, insecurity, um, whatever it may have been that we either experienced or maybe what we didn't have that's missing, a void. And so whatever whatever end of that pendulum is, I think, first and foremost, again, we have to go... To God, we have to first of all start with Him, yes. realizing that we've got to sit at His feet. We got to learn from Him, mm-hmm. because you can't get what you don't have. Yeah. And so, the closer and more intimate in our relationship we are with the Lord, and the more we grow in our security, in our identity, and who we are in Christ, yes. that gives us a healthier, stronger foundation. Because now we're able to see ourselves as God sees us rather than maybe what our parents said or how our parents thought or how what our parents didn't do or whatever. Rather than looking to them, we're looking most importantly to God. He's the only perfect parent. He's our Abba Father. He is the one that loves us, who knows us, who understands us more than anything. And, and sadly and unfortunately, you know, this listener, the person who sent in this question is not the only one who of obviously course. is experiencing anything like this. Of I think course. this has almost become the norm rather than the exception, sadly, Absolutely. in our in our culture today. And as you think of yourself as a whole, as a whole, every single one of us has this in us, you yeah. know, because we didn't have perfect parents. Right. We you know, I'm blessed. I had parents that really tried really hard and that, that was massive in my life. What a blessing. I'm so thankful, but they weren't perfect. So er, I, I as well have some emotional things that I've had to work through that were passed from great grandparent to the next one, to the, to my parents (laughs) that I've had to come to grapple with and to work on so that I don't pass it down to my own children. Yeah. Well, let's let's kind of just dive in this a little bit more uh, in detail, because yeah. here, here's what we know to be true, that our beliefs influence our thoughts, mm-hmm. our thoughts influence our feelings or emotions, mm-hmm. and our emotions, feelings ultimately determine our choices, our actions, our mm-hmm you know, our behavior. And so again, it goes back to our beliefs. The mind will justify what the heart believes. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. in our belief system, we have to understand that our beliefs ultimately will determine what is true, what is right and what is wrong. So the question is, is our, in our heart of hearts, do we believe what God says more than anything Mm -hmm. is true about who we are? Mm -hmm his plan, his purpose for our life. Right. Because when we see ourselves as God sees us and we believe him at his word and realize that God loves us, he accepts us, he has a great plan and purpose for our lives, when we see that as truth in our hearts, okay, now that helps me reframe and reshape my thoughts. That's what you know, Romans 12, 2 says, yes. don't conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. Or where did he say? Change begins with the mind. Yes. So 
when we allow our minds to be transformed by the renewing of our minds, then that has a profound effect on the healing nature of our emotions, our feelings. And so rather than walking around feeling inadequate, feeling insecure, feeling fearful, feeling Mm -hmm. anxious thoughts about all the things that I'm not or I could be or I should be or the circumstances that constantly are you know, creating problems and hardships. If we're allowing our mind to go there, then our emotions are going to follow, which ultimately is going to allow us to make decisions or choices that we probably shouldn't have made or act out in the ways that we probably shouldn't. Because again, it goes back to what we believe in our hearts. Right. It's, and a, it's the battlefield non- of the mind. Yes. It is, it is it nonstop. Is nonstop. We have to guard against. Yes. our minds. And, mm-hmm. and, and the Bible says that we are to take on the mind of Christ. Right. And so in doing that, first and foremost, that's why I say we have to really start with yeah. God. And literally every day you have to start yes. with that. And with, he you know, is the first thing that comes to your mind. Yes. When you are when you wake up in that bed, you you're already on the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, and and, so, and rather than thinking yeah. your thoughts, God help me yes. to think your yes. thoughts. Give you know, it's mind. replacing mm-hmm. you know our thoughts with his thoughts. And that's a discipline. Yeah. And so again, there's so much we could say yes. just in this alone, but you know, Philippians, you know, 4 is a great passage, you know, talking about things that we should allow our minds to think upon. Yes. So it's training, it's renewing our mind, it's growing our minds mentally, emotionally, so that we can become healthier and stronger, yes. so that we, in return, can share healthy, productive ways with our children yes. so that they are set up for success, yes. so that they're believing the right beliefs thinking the right thoughts, feeling the right emotions so that they can make right choices. Yes. So that that's that is that takes time. That is a growth and maturation process. So again, if we didn't have that growing up, if that was a missing link in our life, there's a void there. Mm-hmm. We're only going to be prone to feel inadequate or feel maybe even somewhat awkward because we're kind of venturing into unknown territory. Right in trying to make a change, trying to establish something new that maybe we've never seen mimicked or, or excuse me, modeled, and we're trying to mimic something that maybe we don't want to mimic. And so I wrote this book, Michelle, you referenced a few moments ago, called Why Your Kids Do What They Do. Yes. And so I, I put together this mainly because it's what not only did we research, but it was also after years and years of experience mm-hmm. listening to youth all over the country, over 2 million of them. And what I learned is there were five emotional needs. Mm-hmm. And those five emotional needs are not just u- unique to young people. They are, they are true of all of us. We all have a need to be noticed. Mm-hmm. We all have a need for encouragement. We all have a need for empathy. We all have a need for direction. We all have a need for security. So my question really for any parent is this. How were those specific needs met? Or how were those specific needs neglected in your life growing up? Yes. And so think back. You know, I would first of all just ask a parent, look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, how is that need met to be noticed or how is that need to be noticed neglected in my life growing up? Did I receive the proper amount of attention from my parents? Mm -hmm. Did they notice me? Did they give me proper attention that I longed for in my life growing up? What about my teenage years? Mm -hmm. And, and then how has that played out in your life as an adult? Have you found yourself doing things, maybe pursuing a career path, making various decisions you've made, maybe clothes you wear, cars you drive, house you live in, are all of those things underlying driven choices and decisions we've made once again to feed a need Mm -hmm. that has been missing, that we crave in our lives. 
I, I keep thinking about our friend Georgia that shared her story with us years ago that she wanted so badly to be noticed by her father and to gain his acceptance. Mm -hmm. And she, you know, she did not graduate top of her class. She struggled a little bit in high school and, and, and her father basically laughed and said, well, you'll never, yeah. you'll never graduate from college. You'll never really make anything of your life. And she went on to prove him wrong. She taught, graduated top of her class in college. She went on to be a pi get her pilot's license. I mean, she did all these amazing things, and he never gave her the affirmation that she so desperately wanted in her life, even into her 60s. Mm. She could not get the, the attention, the empathy, the encouragement the direction, you know, th those things, she never got it from her dad, no matter how hard she tried, but she relayed to us that she had found that in her relationship with Christ and her heavenly That's father. Awesome. And she began to understand that, that he's really all that she needed yeah. to have that um, need in her life met. Well, it's, it's, it's like the illustration when you're on an airplane when you know they come on board and they tell you that you know in the case of an emergency you know if you're sitting with a child they instruct the parents to put on the oxygen mask on that put on their own oxygen mask first right. before you know they put the oxygen mask on their children and right. why is that because <laughs> you can't effectively you know, in the case of an emergency, you can't effectively give oxygen when you're out of oxygen yourself. That's right. And so we have yeah. to work towards finding healing in yes. our own lives. Yes. And that might require going to a counselor. It might yes. require, you know, getting with somebody that can help you identify some things that maybe you've known, but you've never been able to really kind of bring up to the surface and then really call it by name. Yes. So I just want to just maybe just give some suggestions as we wrap this up, because I think it's important that first and foremost, we allow God to heal us. He's Jehovah Rapha. Mm -hmm. He's He is our ultimate healer. Yes. He wants to heal us mentally. He wants to heal us spiritually. He wants to, he wants to heal us relationally. He wants to be that source of comfort and love and he wants to provide us and meet needs for us in our lives that only he can. Because right. if we don't see God and look to God as our ultimate provider to meet the needs in our lives, mm -hmm. then we're always going to look to something else or someone else to meet needs in our lives. And they may meet them temporarily, mm -hmm. but they can't satisfy them permanently only God can meet certain needs in our lives. Yes. And so even for, a spouse can't meet some absolutely. Of those needs that, no, because yeah. they're fallen individuals. Yes. They're always going to fall short mm -hmm. of whatever expectations that we have. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, only God can meet certain needs. And we have yes. to look to Him first and foremost for healing in our lives. Yes. The other thing is we need to make sure that we identify the hurt. And this yeah. is so important. Whatever it was our that maybe our parents in the past did said you know intentionally or unintentionally yeah, i mean many just, times it's unintentional but, but we felt yeah. it but yes. we felt it yes. and and we carry that hurt we carry right. those wounds mm -hmm. but i like to say it this way if you can't name it then if you if, can't if, overcome it you can't overcome it yeah. if, if you can't define it you can't defeat it right so it's important that we identify whatever that is mm -hmm. go ahead and just get it out in the open Yes. I think it's important that we acknowledge that rather than try to suppress that or think it's just going to eventually go away. Mm -hmm. I think it's important that we also get perspective. So again, perspective mm -hmm. might be from somebody who knows us really well. Mm -hmm. They probably have sensed, you know, some insecurities or maybe they've watched, you know, and observed some patterns that maybe just aren't necessarily the best or the healthiest. Mm -hmm. And those may be symptoms or signs that there's some underlying things there that we're still carrying and they're manifesting out in different ways. Mm -hmm. I think it's important, and this is huge, that we forgive. Yes. We forgive our parents. We forgive whoever it may have been that have brought hurt in our lives. 
Yes. We've got to, first and foremost, receive forgiveness from God yes. so that we, in return, can give forgiveness to others. Yes. Because if we choose not to forgive, then we're going to carry that spirit of unforgiveness, mm-hmm. and we will self-destruct over time. 100%. God, God cannot bless and forgiveness. The Bible's very clear we about it. You have to release it. And and it's not a one time, one and done, especially when it comes to our parents, something in our past. When that battlefield of the mind begins, then it's it's I forgive again. I forgive again. That's why yes. the Bible 70 times seven. Yes. It's whatever many unlimited. times it takes. Limited. It's total and complete forgiveness. Yeah. It's over and over and even if you start to think that negative thought something about that person i forgive again and we we may not be able to forget what happened that's right but we can forgive yes and we can move on knowing that we are under the protection we are under the forgiveness the grace of god yes and knowing that if we've been forgiven God's saying, why do you keep bringing up something that I have already forgiven and moved on? Yeah. So we have to do, be willing to do the same thing. Right. And then the last thing is, is that we have to grow from that. Yes. So I think I think God just has a way. It's what Romans 8.28 teaches. Yes. That, that in Christ Jesus, God can take what the enemy meant for bad God mm-hmm. can turn it around and use it for good. Yes. All things do work together for the good for those who are called according by Christ, yes. according to his purposes. That's so right. with that in mind, I'd, we have to grow, learn, and yes. overcome yes. those things. I, I love the illustration. We can wrap up with this, that my dad was so famous for for telling this story of he would always say, I love chocolate cake. Don't you love chocolate cake? And we'd all say, yes, we love chocolate cake. And he said, but how do you, you know, make chocolate cake? And just think about that. You know, I, I, he said, I love to eat that chocolate cake when it's warm coming out of the oven, just iced. Uh, but I, you know, I don't really like to eat flour by itself. That's terrible. I I don't really like to eat butter by itself. I I don't like to eat cocoa by itself. And I really don't even like to eat like spoonfuls of sugar by itself or raw eggs by itself. But when you mix all that bad tasting stuff together, you put it in the fire of the oven. It comes out amazing chocolate cake. Mm -hmm. And I love chocolate cake, he would say. But he said, some of the things that we go through in life are bitter. Yeah. They taste terrible when we're walking through them. But God is working all those things together to make beautiful chocolate cake, something that only he could do, that we can enjoy, that we can love the life that God has given us, even though we walk through some difficult things. Absolutely. And we can't change what our life is made of but we can change the way that we perceive what we've become yeah. and what we can use all those difficult things. He's using it all together yeah. for good in our life. Yeah. And I would just say this as we wrap this up today is just think other significant people in your life who have helped you thank along them. the way. Thank them because yeah. mm-hmm. gratitude is so important Yeah, because again, you're going to find great joy. And when you give you know, when you have a thankful spirit, yeah. you know, for what God has brought you from, where you are today, the people he's brought into your life to position you, to get you to the place that you are today, man, that does wonders. Yeah. And so dropping them a note, handwritten note, or just letting them know how much you appreciate the fact that they believe in you, that they're encouraging Good. you, that they're helping you. Yeah. Because again, we are all products of our past, but we don't have to be prisoners of our past. So when we go to God, look to God, and see Him as our primary source of need, and we learn to become healthy and secure, and we find our identity and our security and who we are in Him, mm-hmm. now we're in a better, healthier, stronger place yeah. to be able to meet those five needs that we talked about earlier in a more effective and healthier Really, in a more authentic way, 
in the lives of our children. We can all grow and develop better listening yeah. skills. And, you know, we can all grow and develop better habits and things that will allow us just to grow and get better and become more natural at doing things that maybe we, you know, that may not even come natural to us. God will give us the ability to do what we can't. He is our Abba Father, our perfect Father, and He's a Father to the fatherless. So no matter what our story is, we have a perfect Father who is always there for us, and we have a big brother that is perfect, and His name is Jesus. Amen when, to that. When we don't know what to do, we ask the question. That's right. What would our big brother do? <laughs> and we can go to our Father. Well, if you would like to get a copy of this book called Why Your Kids Do What They Do, of course, they're on all uh, online retailers. You can text the number there on the screen that we'll have there for you as well. And we would love to be able to just uh, get you a copy of that. I think the second part of that book speaks specifically to the question our listener had raised, and I think it would be a great source of help and encouragement to you. It's basically... It's, it's, it's referred to as looking yourself in the mirror. It's We have to learn a lot about ourselves related to these important emotional needs so we can be emotionally healthy, not just for our own health and well-being, but ultimately for the health and well-being of our children. So we really encourage you to get a copy of that. I think it'll be a blessing to you. There's a study guide that also is a companion study guide that goes with it. It'd be a great small group, uh, opportunity or resource to pass along with others and be a part of that journey with you together. But until next go around, let me just encourage you once again to rate, review, again, share this podcast with others. And we want to say how much it means to us that you have allowed us to come alongside to help champion you, to champion you as parents so that you can raise strong, resilient kids. Thanks, you guys.